Hi, how are we doing? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I hope I'm, I think I was a minute late here, but try to keep it as close as possible to the time I'm supposed to call in. No, it's super punctual, no problem at all. Cool, man. So how are you today? Well, I'm doing good. It's Sunday later evening, so I'm looking forward to what you have prepared. So I'm looking forward to it, yeah. I've only got about 150 questions for you. I hope you have the time for that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just messing around, man. <laughs> no problem. Just bring it. Totally Question number it. one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I, I will write it down. One of 150, okay, so that we can keep track of it. Yeah. No worries, man. It's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, just a few questions here. Um, listen to the new album, man. I mean, this is, I guess, what do you call this? The triumphant third I mean, you, you have your, your, your debut, you get past that, you have the sophomore, which is always a pain in the ass. Yeah. And you have the new, the, now you've, you're over that hump, and now it's like a whole new thing again, right? It's make it or break it, okay? Yeah, right, right, right. Absolutely. It's a great album, man. I mean, it's, it's rocking, you know? I mean, I, no complaints at all. I mean, I don't see why anybody wouldn't dig it, you know? I mean, there's... I mean, obviously, you know, one of your babies, so you're behind it and all that. But how do you feel this compares to previous works that you've done? Are you trying to do something different with this to show the world, you know, even more of your talent? I mean, what's the what's the what's the what's the thoughts behind this album? Yeah. First of all, thank you very much. Glad you like it. That's strong. And um, yeah, what I can tell you is that uh, it absolutely was a little bit of a different approach with the third record. Because, you know, the first one I did write completely on my own. With uh, Shadows, we had um, me done the major part of it and the other guys contributing to it. And for the third one, uh, fortunately, uh, I was able to slip back into the producer role, which I was since all the three records, and let the other guys contribute their songwriting skills into the record. So um, Herbie was very cool. He delivered four songs on his own for the record. Uh, Alex did a song. Frederick did two songs. I did the rest. So uh, we really, really were growing as a band. And um, we know us for about 10 years right now. So the third one, really, we wanted to know it, okay? We really wanted to get into it and put a stamp on it. This is Sinbri 2016, how we like it and how it should sound. And I'm totally happy that it turned out that well. And yeah, it adds a little bit more color to it when there are more songwriters on it. And this is what we did with the Master Creator. Very cool, very cool. You know, I, it's interesting to me because, I mean, there's two different types of, of ways or two different ways of doing it, I suppose, in the industry, at least two, uh, when it comes to the writing process. Sometimes there's just a writer or two, and sometimes it's a collective work where the band all gets involved. I've seen that when we talk about making and breaking an album. I've seen that actually make or break a band where bands can just never get on the same page and agree if there's too many people, you know, throwing their ideas into the pot. You know, you know, everybody's got issue with somebody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody brings something cool, but then they have issue with somebody else's stuff. So you fix that. And by the time it goes all the way around the, the circle, around the table, there's there's twice as many issues to deal with and they can just never get it off the ground. But obviously, this isn't a problem for you, and the way you know you guys are doing this now is is really working. And it's... Yeah, yeah, you're right, absolutely. And um, the thing is, what I can tell you is um, that um, me being, you know, sort of the the musical director, <laughs> I would would call it, is that the first thing we do is that when somebody is finishing a song. And this is the cool thing in uh, Simbreed that everyone is capable of doing a full demo with the, the song, okay, with drums, with bass, with, with vocal lines and everything like that. And then they send it to me and I do a review, change a little bit here and there, uh, rearrange it a little bit to just make it fit to Simbreed, okay? So when I have done that to the song of the band member, I send it him back. Then a big fight is going on. <laughs> the, <laughs> right. stuff, the stuff you mentioned before. Um, and then we, you know, we exchange each other and I try to explain him my ideas and stuff like that. And when this all is settled, then that song in the latest version goes to the rest of the band, okay? And then they can contribute and give thoughts and opinions on it. 
But at the end of the day, this is how a song, a Simbrit song gets on the record, okay? Uh, from the writer to me as the producer, back to the group and then on the record. And um, without that filter, okay, that without that filter I'm doing, then it will be a hell of a mess. But everyone is cool with it. That's why I started Simbrit in the first place, you know, to, to bring out the music I really do like. and. Very cool. I found those talented guys, and they do write their songs on their own. It's turned out pretty, pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging it, man. If it works for you, whatever keeps you going, that's, uh, yeah, that's what I say. You know, exactly. You found, you found a good formula, so stick with it. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. So tell me a bit about the concept, uh, the theme behind Master Creator. What are you discussing on this? I mean, where's the title come from? The song? Um, what kind of things are you uh, opening? up for the world to to look into and, and find out more about Sinbreed. Yeah, when we're talking about the cover artwork um, and the, the term master creator, uh, this is what I like is that a lot of people have different ideas when they uh, think about the title and uh, what we had on the cover is um, some, somehow they most people understand it like a machine, okay, where something is created and the little guy is standing on the top is you know uh, managing that machine so i really liked that people came up with that idea but uh, master creator was from our point of view is every one of us okay you and me and everyone is the creator of his own life and how it should uh happen okay so we can create our life decide what to do what job are we doing what is our religion what do we want to become a good person, a bad person, and stuff like that? Okay, the master creator is every one of us, and uh, no uh, God or highest stuff like that. It's just you and me, and uh, this is what we try to transpose with the with the message that you can that you think what you do with your life. So that's the basic idea behind it. Cool, very cool, right on, man. You know, I I've been reading a lot of stuff around the internet, and I I don't know if I mean, sure you're aware of what's being said about you, but there's uh seems to be some some fans, anyways, that get the idea that you guys uh, are a Christian band. I know that uh, at least uh, Herbie comes from a band that was classified in that realm somewhat. Mm -hmm. But uh, what what do you guys think about that? I and mean, what's your I mean, do you want to make any disclaimer or anything or? <laughs> You know, um, I'm pretty easy on it. You know, like you mentioned, uh, Herbie was in a band called Seventh Avenue, which was not about it, a, a so-called white metal band. And yeah, I think what, what comes from it uh, that uh, quite a lot of people think that uh, Sinbreed is a follow-up to, to Herbie's Seventh Avenue band. Um, I'm cool with it, even if it's my baby, I would say so. But um, we've grown together as a band. Sinbrit is everyone's band from the four of us. So um, if people connect uh, Herbie with his white metal past and put Sinbrit under the table and stuff like that. So I'm totally cool with it, okay? There are much worse things you can get connected to than that. So um, all the fans in South America of 7th Avenue, if they check out Sinbri, they are more than welcome. Uh, but we do not uh, proclaim ourselves as a, as a Christian band. We, we do not. Yes. Right. But those influences are still going to come through at some point because you're, you give uh, open freedom to the different members of the band that contribute writing, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And the lyric-wise, we do do handle Christianity and stuff like that. So um, we are very, very open-minded. Uh, we do uh, treat books and, you know, Charles Orwell and stuff like that. So there's a big mixture, you know, and um, we really like it that way. Right. It's interesting because I, I think when it comes to – it's a sticky, sticky mess when it comes to – you know, identifying with anything of faith in that regard, namely Christianity, because, you know, you can be out there. I mean, you can be I mean, I know bands that, you know, are into Wiccan religion or or uh, or, um, you know, like the pagan type stuff or mm. they can be Buddhists or whatever it is. Nobody ever calls that into question. But as soon as you say Christian or something like that, they're like, oh, wow, well, you know, that doesn't belong in metal and. And uh, they seem to forget that metal is about the music, and and that's what comes first, anyways. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah. you don't you don't buy an album to hear somebody preach their worldview 
to you. You, you want to hear the music and if they suck or not, you know. Yeah, that's absolutely true what you're saying and what you bring up. Um, I do not know why it's this way, but um, yeah, maybe, you know, like Hinduism and stuff like that. This, there is no so, so many religious bands in that and they uh, sing about it. So then you only have good and bad and then you only have, you know, Christianity and, you know, stuff about the devil and stuff like that. But I'm totally on the same page with you. Um, the music is that what counts and uh, especially in heavy metal because you, you're you free to do what you want as long as the music is pretty cool. So. Yeah. I'm on the same page with you. I, I'm just a metal fan, you know. I mean, I, I identify with a certain faith, too. I'm a Christian, but, you know, I can pick up a Slayer album and say, hey, these guys are great, you know. I mm -hmm. love this band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, give, I don't give a crap what they're, you know, saying in their lyrics or anything like that, you know. As long as they let me alone and just play good music, I'm, I'm fine with that, so. Totally agree. Let's talk for a minute about the, the latest video, uh, Moonlit Night. Uh I believe that's the latest video, anyways. Last time, last one You're I right. saw. Anyways, You're right. um, interesting thing, uh, kind of creepy with the big giant bug in the room, and uh, <laughs> that was different. And then all the makeup and stuff. Like I mean, people are like, "What are? You, are were you guys just trying to be shocking visually, just to draw attention, or was there actually a reason behind it?" <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, first thing to know is uh, that you, yeah, the idea was that it's a, bit, a little bit dark and a little bit creepy, but uh, you have to know that um, that particular song is based on uh, uh, Franz Kafka, who is a famous writer over here in Europe, and he wrote a book called Metamorphosis, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, the thing was, yes, we are a heavy metal band, yes, we are a power metal band, but we can do, uh, you know, deeper shit and uh, transpose it in a perfect heavy metal song and then to adopt it to a video, okay? Right. So it was a big, big challenge. It was very tricky when you think of the budget and stuff like that. And it was a little bit risky, you know. Um, some fans might get it the wrong way or do not take the time to really, you know, uh, check it out and read what's going on with those ideas so we were concerned but uh, the cool thing is that I, I saw a guy eight minutes after the video got released he posted on the youtube comment that it's that it's Franz kafka so he got it very very quickly and so mission accomplished director did hell of a job and yes it's a creepy creepy atmosphere uh, but at the end of the day all that counts is the song and how it gets received by the fans and media. And so far as now, we are very, very happy with the outcome. Very cool. I appreciate um, conceptual type videos like that, visual things, because for this, those of us, you know, especially here in the States, that'll probably, I mean, hopefully not, but a lot of times when it comes to European bands coming to the States, we're waiting a lifetime for that to ever happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so getting any kind of visual representation, if it's via a concept video or even live videos, is always something that's very entertaining and, and just helps us, uh, at least for me, you know, uh, remain faithful fans and really dig it and get into what you guys are doing. And it's very artistic, this video. I mean, it's, it gave me nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We didn't want that, but, you know. Uh, Dreaming we about giant awesome. bugs in the room. <laughs> yeah, when, when you when you watch it uh, at night and you have no light and you don't expect anything but that, then it's it's a bit creepy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, good job, man. Good job. Yeah, hey, thanks. Um, speaking of that, uh, as far as videos, as live stuff goes, are you, do you, is there any talk about doing a live album, a live video at some point uh, early on? I mean, I, I know that's kind of tr hit and miss, you know, but... Uh, you know, bands will put out videos over their entire career, and it's always great to see where they were live at one point and versus back at a new, you know, like if they've been around for 10 years or so. I'd love to see something live, you know, even if it's just a short thing or you add it on to the end of the next album or something as a bonus, that would be cool. Best thing, of course, would be that she tour here in the States and I get to see you in person. Absolutely. Um, that would be awesome. You know, like we, we did play uh, Proc Power in 2012. It was such an amazing experience. And um, yeah, if it's by any mean, anyhow possible to, to do it for Simbreed, then we would be absolutely freaking out to play the US again. So um, this is a tough one, but uh, we will, of course, 
take any chance when we get it um, to make this possible. And the other thing is, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was uh, thinking about, you know, doing a, a live in the studio st uh, situation. Because unfortunately, with the Shadows record, we weren't able to tour that much and play live. Uh, it's looking a bit better with the Master Creator uh, package to, to play this a little bit more live. But yeah, when you have the media like YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that, it would be our pleasure to, to record a live in the studio set to just give something back to the fans and that they really can, you know, be part of such a live show. Um, yeah, this is what we think about it. Uh, since a long time, and hopefully one day we we were able, we, we will be able to to do it. Actually, yes. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, Atlanta Power uh, Prague Power Fest. I'd love to go to it myself. It's just on the opposite side of the continent for me, and a little difficult to get there. But uh, yeah, they need to see something out here on the West Coast to do like a Prague Power West or something. <laughs> Bring the bands here. Yeah, would be awesome. Would be awesome. I mean, I it's not like you're not going to have a crowd because there's thousands of people that would love to go to that fest back there and i know that you would have that out here as mm -hmm. well i don't know why the organizers don't try and do something a little bit bigger they'd make more money mm -hmm. you know so but um well cool man uh thank you for your time and it's a great record man it really is and i'm really digging it and uh i have one last question for you and it's kind of kind of an, uh, a slightly odd question because it pertains to another project. Uh, mm -hmm. okay, I recently brilliant. got I recently got the the new Avantasia album, mm -hmm. and I noticed that Herbie had lent his voice to that. Yes, uh, a song called Draconian Love. Mm -hmm. But I'll be damned, nobody can recognize that man because he's singing <laughs> in a way that's like that's not the same guy. There's no way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> was, was that? I mean, I don't know if you even know the answer to this or not, being that you're not him, but. Was he trying to do something just totally different and far removed to, to distance himself from sounding like Sinbreed? Or, or I mean, what's the what's the reasoning behind it? It's a different voice for him for sure. Totally, totally. Well, uh, what I can tell you, and uh, this is uh, this is even public yet, um, is that uh, Herbie was singing uh, this song as a demo, and they were trying to get someone I don't know again who it was. But um, the demo was came out so cool that to be a summit um, actually decided to keep Herbie on the record, and they didn't re-record it or stuff like that. So they just took the, the demo track, and so this is how Herbie did end up with uh, his with his voice doing the lead vocal on the new Avantasia. Yeah, pretty cool wow. stuff. Wow, <laughs> very cool. Totally. Just a demo track, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing how. <laughs> great demos can sound these days <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> that's cool yeah if i get a chance i'll have to ask him you know what he decided or how that came about with dropping down into the lower registers yeah it's so gothic like and not power metal per se you know, so. yeah it's a totally different approach absolutely yeah. digging it either way but it did pique my interest when i saw him on the on the Avantasia record like oh really cool and then I heard it I'm like I kept listening for his voice I'm like where's he at I don't I don't get it and what's up is, is this another, the wrong the wrong number another Herbie I don't know yeah. <laughs> all right on flow thank you so much again for your time it's been yeah. a pleasure and uh, keep going man you yeah I look forward to the future for you guys it's gonna be awesome thank you David thanks a lot for having me and thank you for your support okay you got it man you know bye bye all right bye now.